Welcome back to another post from Theology and Religion with J.D. Reiner. Uh, we have been on a little mini-series of biblical interpretation. Uh, so today, the final method of reading the Bible that we will talk about is the theological style of interpretation. Unlike the historical and literary approaches, to read scripture theologically is to read it as inspired by God. Because of this, we can read the Bible as a single book with one overarching message, with its, which is God's offer of salvation for all people through Jesus' death and resurrection. And because it has an overarching message, it speaks to us across times and places. So, how is it that we interpret the Bible theologically? I'm sure that if you practice Christianity, that most of you, uh, most of you have a sense of how to do that already. Your parents, Sunday school teachers, and ministers likely have taught you how to read scripture while asking God to guide your understanding and to help you grow spiritually. That is an excellent way to dive into the word of the Lord. Yet there is more to reading the Bible than just asking for guidance. We must be aware of what is going on when we read the Bible as Christians, because it is possible to read the Bible in non-Christian or non-religious ways, as we have seen with the historical and literary interpretations. If you haven't seen those videos, then you can navigate elsewhere to the, the channel or podcast and, and find those. Uh, to read the Bible as a Christian, you have to read it within the framework of the Christian tradition as a whole. So what is that tradition? It is the belief that God revealed himself in Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, equal in divinity to both God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. It is also the belief that the Jewish scriptures in the Old Testament foreshadow and predict the arrival of Christ as the Savior of the world. And it is the belief that the early Christian writings of the New Testament attest to Christ's fulfillment of God's promises to Israel. Christian theological interpretation of Scripture should be informed by these core beliefs. If we depart from these assumptions when reading Scripture, then we are no longer interpreting Scripture as Christians. We either, we either have to interpret it uh, within the framework of another religious tradition, or we have to interpret it in a non-religious way. So uh, that's exactly what happens to some people who only read the Bible, uh, assuming that the Holy Spirit alone will interpret the Scripture for them. Uh, in other words, some people uh, disregard the tradition as a, as a rule for reading. And then when they read it, you know, they just come up with it, whatever interpretation uh, they think. So the result of that belief is that we now have over 30,000 denominations that claim to interpret Scripture correctly. So this is a pretty important issue uh, when we're uh, reading the Bible. So the theological method is also most important for Christians because this is the type of interpretation that we find within the Bible itself. We can see biblical authors treating previous biblical writings as inspired scripture. The Gospel of Matthew, for example, uses theological interpretation of the Old Testament to show how Christ fulfilled God's promises to Israel throughout the preceding centuries. In chapter 2, the author describes how Joseph takes Mary and Jesus to Egypt to escape King Herod's plan to kill Jesus. The passage goes like this. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Notice that Matthew quotes an Old Testament passage at the end of this excerpt. The quotation is from Hosea 11.1. 1. If we look up the whole verse from the prophet Hosea, it goes like this. When Israel was a child, then I loved him, and called my son out of Egypt. You might be surprised to see that the text actually refers to God's calling of Israel out of Egypt, rather than the Messiah, or Christ. The fact that Matthew uses the passage to refer to Jesus might not make very much sense, at least if, at least if we're just concerned with the historical meaning, for example, of Hosea. However, uh, Matthew is not just reading Hosea historically. He is reading Hosea theologically. His starting point is his belief that Jesus is God's promised Messiah, so he is able to read the Old Testament as foreshadowing Jesus. In this way, the Old Testament has a double meaning. On the one hand, 
It describes God's actions in Israel's history. And on the other hand, it points forward to Christ as the fulfillment of God's promises to Israel. Just like Matthew, we must read all of Scripture theologically, which means reading it within the religious tradition of our historic community of believers, that is, the Church. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this very short discussion of theological interpretation of Scripture. To see my other posts, visit jdreiner.com or go to my YouTube or Odyssey channels. You are invited to like and subscribe, as well as to donate using the links below if you wish. You can also contact me at jonathandreiner at gmail.com, which is the email associated with my YouTube channel, uh, if you'd like to get in touch. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.